All right, everybody. Hello. I am so excited to present to you this fasting and fat release reset. And we're going to do this particular one in July, but this is so packed full of information. I want you to sit tight and I'm going to teach you how to release those stored sugars. What does that even mean? And, and shrink our fat cells. All righty. So for many of you that know me, my name is Tanya. I am the author of Cookie Dough in the Dark. I founded Vibrant Living with Tanya. I have a new program called Fasting and Fat Release. I just embody health and fitness and vitality and vibrancy and energy. And I know without a doubt that if I had not changed what I was doing before in and around the age of 35, I would not be in the health that I am now. I know that for certain, certain because I was headed in the wrong direction. And so many, I talk to so many of you and you say, Tanya, I'm, I'm getting belly fat. My energy is down. Um, you know, these things are happening to me. I haven't changed anything. Like what's going on? But that's the problem. You haven't changed anything. And unfortunately, we have to change things, but we don't have to diet. We don't need to deprive ourselves. We don't need to restrict ourselves. I still live a very enjoyable life, but I'm going to share some things with you today. And we're going to make this fun because I find sometimes things get so serious. So we're going to have some fun with this. Okay, so what is happening to me after 35? Oh my gosh, what's going on? Okay, well, our hormones are changing. Our bodies are changing. And I had no idea this was going on. I knew some things because I've been in the health and fitness industry. But listen, you know, I've been a personal trainer since I was in my early 20s. I taught aerobics. I'm a, a Pilates instructor. I've taught all types of fitness. I'm a health coach. I've written a book called Cookie Dough in the Dark. I mean, I'm immersed in this stuff. So I can't even imagine uh, being an accountant or a lawyer and all your energy is going to those things and your health bucket is deteriorating and or you're you're a mom like you know you're just busy with life so i eat breathe and sleep this stuff so hang in there with me and i'm going to share some amazing things with you today but you know what many of you know i was a sugar addict on a scale you know i was at a 10 out of 10 and uh, oh i should also mention that i have a podcast called menopause made easy which i am so enjoying so if you haven't listened to that Listen to that on Spotify and Apple. It just made me think of this because um, as a woman over 35, we really need to start to change what we're doing. And I was a sugar addict and, you know, I had been playing around with this because it's a mental game. Sugar is a very emotional, mental, physical addiction. So I've done lots of talks on that. So um, I'm not going to go into that. We're going to talk about something else, but too many of us have eaten too much sugar and sugar doesn't mean you're at the sugar jar and it's just pouring into your face. It can mean baked goods, store-bought processed food, pasta, breads, chips, popcorn. It can be in healthy foods, which we're discovering in our Vibrant Living membership, the amount of health washing going on, right? And so we get this too much system, sugar into our system and it stores us fat which if you saw my video yesterday, fat is great. Like we need fat under our arms and under our butt buttocks because having this fat helps to keep it away from our organs, which is super handy or else we would just die very quickly. So let's have a love and appreciation for our fat because it has a role. But I know that it can be super frustrating to have this belly fat come in and just, you know, the lethargy and the brain fog and all this kind of stuff. So what's going on? So we have this sweet seduction, right, where um, we hear a lot of those words like just have one more treat. It won't hurt. But this is hurting us now. And again, I am not sugar free. I still have sugar in my life, but I definitely have less sugar. And I'm still working on reducing that because I can get into a good size jumbo chocolate bar and devour that thing. So I am not talking from a pedestal here. I am, you know. Oh my gosh, I am I am a human. I am a work in progress, but I am so much better. And I also know some tricks. Okay. And that's what I'm going to share with you today as well. 
So, you know, the other thing about sugar is we're making this fun, but the chronic disease circus can show up at our door and too much sugar can pave the way for a circus of chronic disease. I'm talking about diabetes, which swings with its, you know, sugar-coated hula hoops and heart disease tries to juggle our cholesterol and inflammation is rampant, right? And it's a chaotic circus that you don't want to be in the front row of. You don't want to have your life after 35 uh, be one of managing disease. You don't want that. You want vibrancy and energy, okay? And you don't have to jump off a cliff to get it. You can do some very simple shifts, all right? We also have like that sugar-induced energy crash. Oh my gosh, I was there for years. I thought sugar gave me energy. I was feeling low. It was three o'clock. I needed to pick me up right? But it's a mischievous game of hide and seek, everybody. And it will give you that temporary boost of energy only to leave you feeling drained and fatigued. And it's like a roller coaster ride where energy levels skyrocket and then they plummet faster than a sugar-coated rocket, okay? And who needs that kind of ride, right? We can get sustainable energy from really great nutritional choices. Then you have the fat storage fiesta, Okay, and too much sugar can trigger a fat storage fiesta. We have had just the worst 20, 30 year experiment with low fat, no fat. Fat is not a problem. Now there's a difference. There's healthy fats and there's unhealthy fats, which I'll save for another video, but uh, sugar turns into fat, right? If you don't use it and uh, it throws a little celebration and it comes to, you know, goes in unwanted places like visceral fat. I've done a video on that, which is the fat you don't see, which is around your organs, which is that, you know, toxic belly. You have subcutaneous fat, which is the fat you can pinch. You've got your, you know, unwanted fat guests of love handles and muffin tops and belly bulges. But fear not, ladies over 35, Okay, we can show those fat cells the exit door with a very balanced diet and menopausal but balanced diet. And again, I'm not going to tell you to eat certain things because it's very interesting. Uh, stick with me. Okay. And yeah, you do need to be moving your body. Okay. You do need, oops, you do need to be moving your body. Oh, goodness. We just had like a, a uh, crazy happening here. Okay. I need to be here. Okay. So then the last thing I'll talk about with this excess sugar if you, is you have an inflammatory uprising. Excess sugar can unleash an inflammatory uprising like a rebellious army wreaking havoc on your body. And I was starting to notice signs and symptoms for a very long time and I ignored them, okay? I didn't know how to deal with them. I didn't have the skills. I was caught in the diet loop, eat more exercise, or sorry, eat less, exercise more. I did not have emotional regulation skills. Okay, I had uh, anxiety creeping up. I had um, sugar rushes, night sweats, brain fog. Um, what else? I had burning feet, burning hands. I had signs and I chose to ignore them because food is like a drug. Okay, and it had me. Oh, it had me. Okay, um, so we don't want that. It reeks havoc in your body. It's a riot of inflammation. It causes havoc in your joints. How many of you have joint pain, um, problems with your organs and your tissues? Okay. But fret not, fret not ladies. We can fight back with anti-inflammatory foods, which are going to reduce the redness and the soreness and restore peace and harmony within. Okay. So grab your super cape your superhero cape. Let's dive into making some informed choices and march forward towards a vibrant health happiness and have some chuckles along the way. Okay, let's not be so serious about this. We want um, this to be a fun ride. Okay, so where is sugar hiding in your body? So this is really interesting to me, and we're going to break this down over the next few slides, is that it, it hides in your blood, right? The blood sugar levels go up, then when they can't handle it anymore, this isn't, it goes into your fat, it goes into your muscles, it goes into your liver, and then it goes into your brain and it goes into your eyes. And I'm telling you, I am doing this because I have so much passion in my heart. I am seeing way too much mental um, dysregulation, Alzheimer's, dementia, all, and I don't want that. I'm in my 50s and I am looking ahead now for the next 30, 20 to 30 years. And I know that every single day I have the choice 
to either move myself in the direction of health or unhealthiness. I have that choice. I want to empower you. So when you get this excess sugar in your brain, you start to have brain issues, right? You can start with brain, brain fog, memory problems, then it goes into dementia, it goes into Alzheimer's. The statistics right now are alarming. And that's what made me put together this presentation. Then it can store into your eyes. So over time, you get it stored into your eyes because again, it needs places to go. And then you have macular degeneration. Oh my gosh, who wants that? I don't. Okay, so this isn't just about denying and restricting ourselves. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was, what slide was I just on? Oh, so I have two slides. Very interesting. Okay, so let's talk about excess sugar in your blood. And again, let's make this fun. So your that sugar is throwing a wild party in your blood after 35. Now, listen, this is happening young, 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 but I'm really just focusing on women over 35. But if you have children, please take note. If you have grandchildren, please take note. Sugar is insidious. It's in everything. Okay. So let's put on our fun hats and let's explore some sugary shenanigans um, of what's going on in your blood. So you've got the sugar rush. I can't speak. Sugar rush express. Ah, okay. Let's brace ourselves for a wild ride as we go on this express of sugar rush, okay? So having excess sugar in your blood can make, make you feel like you've chugged a gallon of an energy drink. And you might think that I'm piped up on sugar right now, but I'm not, this is, you know, mostly my natural state, uh, you know, which is kind of crazy, but <laughs> that's okay. I do have downtime, everybody. But uh, I do not need energy, energy drinks at all, but I do eat my sugar. But anyway, you you have that sugar rush express. You feel like a hyperactive squirrel doing acrobatics and in your veins. Hold on tight and enjoy this jittery journey because that's some excess sugar in your blood. Okay. Then you have the sugar coated roller coaster. Anybody on that one? So get ready for this this roller coaster ride. You have excess sugar can send your blood sugar levels soaring and then crashing. And remember when your blood sugar levels go up. What happens is, is that you have um, the, or the hormone insulin uh, activates and that's a fat storage hormone. So if you haven't picked up my five hacks to cut your cravings guide, please put yes in the comments below and I will make sure you have it because they're simple, five simple hacks that you can do to start to regulate your blood sugar levels, okay? Again, this is not about deprivation. It's not about restriction. It's not about dieting. It's about applying some simple hacks to how you eat food, when you eat it. Um, switching the order of things can have an amazing effect on you. Okay, so we don't want this soaring and crashing, right? We don't want the ride up and down, okay? That is not fun, and I have been on it. And then you get the dopamine kicking in. That dopamine is that that's searching for more pleasure. It's never about eating it. It's always about you're eating a cookie or a piece of chocolate and then it's saying, okay, eat more, eat more, eat more. So there's lots of things to unwind here, but well, let's just get back focused, Tanya, focused. Okay, then you have the sweet sabotage on waste. Okay, you've got your weight sabotager. So excess sugar in your blood can play a sneaky game with your weight management efforts. So whether you need to lose weight, which I don't even call it losing weight, because do you want to find it again? Seriously? No, you don't. Okay. You want to release the weight. And I actually like saying shrink your fat cells, because that's really what you want to pay attention to here is shrinking your fat cells. All right. So um, going back to weight management efforts here. So it's like having a mischievous sugar gremlin that loves to turn your favorite pants into skinny jean nightmares. Okay, so we want to keep that, keep that gremlin in check by watching our sugar intake and rocking that fabulous style, no matter what your size, everybody. Okay, what I really want to focus on is shrinking your fat cells and getting the um, excess sugar out of your body because that's wreaking havoc for future chronic disease. Okay, then we have the thirst trap surprise. So um, prepare for the unexpected dessert oasis in your mouth. Excess sugar can make you feel like you've licked a sandy cactus, okay? And it leaves you constantly thirsty. I know many of you talk about being thirsty and then urinating more and you urinate more because there's too much sugar in your bloodstream. So they kind of go hand in hand here. 
So um, we want to keep the water flowing and stay hydrated. Okay, so that's one tip that you want to keep doing um, that's going to help you, but you're going to get into that thirst trap. Then you've got the sleepy sugar crash. Okay, so you ever go in deep into your sugar here, everybody, and you have that excess sugar can lead to like a sugar induced coma, leaving you feeling sleepy and ready for a nap. It's like having a sugar coated lullaby that lulls you into dreamland. And you can fight off that sugar crash crash and embrace the power of a balanced diet to keep your energy levels stable and awake. So it's really about looking at your menopausal diet, your menopausal balanced plate, like I, I need, to, I like to say. So there's always about finding a sweet spot. I was a 10 out of 10 on the sugar addiction scale. You might be a three out of 10, or you might be an eight out of 10, but you can always trend down and get a little smarter with your choices. Okay. So let's raise a sugar-free toast to a vibrant, energetic, and balanced life. All right. Because we want to keep those blood sugar levels stable, not up and down. So give me a high five. Let me know that you're understanding all of this and uh, ask me any questions. I can't see them right now, but I will definitely answer them. Okay. So then you have excess sugar in your fat. And speaking of this, I need a little sip of water. Mm. Okay. So this is the one where I say, okay, let's not focus on losing weight anymore. Let's get rid of that. You don't want to lose weight. You don't want to lose bone mass. You don't want to lose muscle mass. You don't want to lose brain mass. You want to shrink your fat cells. Let's start to change your language. I have a YouTube channel. I have mindset minutes. I give you lots of different ways to start to rejig your mindset. Okay. So let's embark on a lighthearted and amusing journey to see about how we can get that ex excess sugar out of your fat cells. So we have the sweet sabotager. Excess sugar can turn your fat cells into sneaky little sugar hoarders. Okay, it's like having a gang of mischievous sugar fairies sprinkling sweetness and expanding your fat stores. But fear not, okay, for you hold the power you hold the power to outsmart those sugar fairies with a balanced diet and an active lifestyle. Yes, you do. Please know that you have the power. Okay, then next we have the love handles surprise party. So excess sugar may have a tendency to throw a surprise party for your waistline. As we get over the age of 35, we like to accumulate extra fat around our belly. That's a whole other presentation that we can get into. OK, and it loves to add some extra inches to those love handles. So we want to watch those sugary party crashers and uh, rock our body by not contributing to our muffin tops. OK, which brings me to my next point, the muffin top extravaganza. OK, the sugary souvenir that excess sugar sometimes likes to leave behind. OK, it's like having a sugar induced baking session that transforms your midsection into a delicious muffin like shape. So let's all embrace our uniqueness. We all carry fat differently in our body. But remember that when you have a balanced menopausal plate and you regularly exercise, you can keep those muffin tops at bay. So the stubborn fat marathon. So excess sugar can give your fat cells a burst of energy, making them cling to their cozy spots like marathon runners unwilling to finish the race. It's like having a sugar filled marathon where the finish line seems to be a galaxy far, far away, but fear not, okay? With determination and healthy choices, you can outrun those stubborn fat cells. And this is why my, my members in my Vibrant Living community and my fat release, um, uh, sorry, uh, fasting and release fat program, we have support and community and we're there to work through this stubborn fat and these muffin tops and um, these love handles and um, just having that support is so important. All right. So then we have the inflammation invasion. And this one, again, is really, you know, hits home with me because, again, I honestly doesn't matter to me what size you are. What matters to me is that you have vibrant health. OK, and sugar overload can contribute to inflammation. Inflammation is the root of disease. Inflammation is creating a puffy party for your fat cells. It's like having a sugar-coated carnival where your fat cells are the guest of honor sporting puffed up appearances. 
Okay, so we want to show these inflated fat cells the exit door by embracing an anti-inflammatory lifestyle and nourishing our body with wholesome foods. And while we're doing this, we're also going to be balancing our blood sugars and balancing our hormones. All right, so we can um, we can make changes. And again, it doesn't have to be the jump off the cliff. This is what I talk about in my book, um, Cookie Dough in the Dark. It's simple shifts. That's how I started to change. Dieting, I spent so many years in that diet loop, which is like jumping off a cliff. Uh, you know, Sunday rolls around. Okay, I'm not going to eat sugar. I'm never eating sugar again. Tuesday by Tuesday, I'm already eating sugar again. Okay, and your grit, your willpower. Maybe you last three months. Maybe you lose all the weight through a diet and then you gain it all back and more because you haven't learned how to... Get the fat out of your fat cells. Remember, fat is an accumulation of excess sugars, hormones, and toxins. Again, that's another presentation. Okay, so let's jump into the next point here. So excess sugar in your muscles. Okay, so this is why, okay, first of all, if you're not weightlifting, I, I just, I cannot tell you, um, oh my gosh, just start weightlifting. Seriously, like, it needs to happen. Um, I have a program in my Vibrant Living membership. It's called Beginner Start Here. I teach you how to lift weights, but let's get back to why we want, uh, let's flex our comedic muscles. I'm, I'm keeping this light and airy today. Let's flex our comedic muscles and explore what we can do. All right. So again, we have that sugar-induced sluggishness, Okay. So we think if we eat sugar, it's going to give us energy, but instead sugar can turn your muscles into a bunch of couch potatoes on a sugar high. All right. It's like having a squad of sleepy marshmallows instead of strong, energized muscles. So we want to shake off that sugar induced lethargy and show those muscles who's boss. All right. So sometimes we think that sugar gives us energy, but oh, we crash and we're on that couch like a couch potato. Okay, we get the jiggly jelly effect. So picture your muscles wrapped in a layer of jiggly jelly, thanks to excess sugar. It's like having a wobbly dance party happening in your muscles whenever you move. So embrace the wiggles, but aim for firmer and stronger muscles with a balanced exercise routine. And I talk about this when I started to get into my late 30s, I revamped my entire exercise program. I had burnt myself out doing way too much cardio, way too much high intensity exercise. And I started to balance it with rolling on my menopause made easy podcast. I have a whole episode on how rolling changed my life, how to balance my nervous system back. Um, I have lots of information that I can share with you. So there are all types of exercise. And when you're over 35, you now need to start to shift into a more balanced approach. And I'm working with some of my clients and there is so much resistance not to punish themselves with exercise. And I was there, I would eat and then punish myself with exercise, work out hard. And it was actually destroyed me. So um, you know what? We need a balanced approach to exercise. You get the crampy chaos. Okay, so you've got excess sugar can wreak havoc on your muscle function, leading to more cramps than a clumsy ballerina on a sugar rush. Okay, it's like having a sugar coated muscle rebellion where cramps strike unexpectedly. So we need to stay hydrated, stretch and tame those unruly cramps like a muscle whisperer. And that means watching our intake of sugar. All righty. Um, and I know many of you talk to me about leg cramps. So just keep this in mind. We're starting to feed all the pieces of the puzzle together. And then you have the stretch, sorry, the strength sabotager. So excess sugar can be sneaky, a sneaky saboteur interfering with your muscle building goals. Okay. It's like having a mischievous sugar gremlin stealing your gains at the gym. And we want to show that gremlin who is boss by fueling our muscles with nutritious choices and keeping your sugar intake in check. Okay, finally, we have the inflammation party crasher. Sugar overload can cause inflammation in your muscles, making them feel like they've hosted the ultimate party that's gotten a bit out of hand, all right? So we wanna calm that inflammation storm, again, by looking at those anti-inflammatory foods so that we can keep our muscles healthy and happy. All right, okay. Next point here, excess sugar in your liver. So remember, 
the sh excess sugar that you're eating goes to your blood, then your fat, not particularly in the sorted, but then it's muscle liver in there. All right. And um, we we're hearing more and more fatty liver disease. Okay. It used to be um, alcohol. Now it's non-alcohol fatty liver disease. And it's happening younger and younger and younger in, in the population. And that is because one reason is the sugary drinks are literally killing us. And again, this is killing us slowly over time with chronic disease. It's not a quick death. It's a slow death. Okay. So let's just um, uh, get into the liver here. I'm trying to keep this light, but I also want to put a little bit of reality in here. So we have the sugar storing super he uh, hero. Your liver, the unsung hero, loves to sh store sugar like a squirrel hoards nuts for the winter. Okay, but excess sugar can turn your liver into a sugar warehouse on steroids. It's like having a sugar stacking superhero whose power is to accumulate glucose faster than a kid collecting candy on Halloween. All right, so we got to love on our liver and watch our intake of sugary drinks, alcohol, processed food, ultra processed food, bad fats. Okay, again, this leaves a lot of amazing things to eat in your diet. And it doesn't mean we're restricting and de depriving ourselves. But there's definitely some shifts that we can make to love on our liver. So then we have the fatty liver fun house. Excess sugar can turn your liver into a fun house, but not the kind you want to visit. Okay, it may lead to an accumulation of fat in your liver. Okay, which is what I talked about called fatty liver disease. And it's like having a sugar coated carnival ride that deposits extra fluffiness in your liver. So let's skip this fatty liver ride and aim for a happy and healthy liver. And I will share how to do that later. Okay, then you have the liver's detox dilemma. The, your liver, oh my gosh, it is such an amazing organ in your body. It's over 500 functions it does every day. So we really want to look after our liver. Remember, we are just collection of cells, everybody. That's all we are. We're a collection of cells. And this was one mindset shift I had in my uh, in, at the age of 35 onwards is that I am a whole being and I need to look after myself. Okay, so let's get back to the detox dilemma. Your liver is a natural born detoxer, but excess sugar can distract it from its mission. It's like having a sugar field fueled party in your liver where the detox crew is too busy handling all the sugar to focus on other toxins. So we really need to support our liver's superhero detox powers by giving it a break from excess sugar. Okay, then we've got the insulin resistance show stopper. So excess sugar can throw a curveball at your liver's relationship with insulin, which is a hormone. Remember, that's the hormone that regulates blood sugar. And if it gets too high, it's your fat storage hormone. So um, it's like having a sugar-fueled jester playing tricks on your liver, making it less responsive to insulin's commands, all right? So we really want to keep the insulin liver duo in sync with a balanced diet and a healthy lifestyle. And then again, look at this. Inflammation comes into everything we've talked about right? Sugar overload can create inflammation in your liver, making it feel like it's hosting a wild party that never ends, making it feel like it's hosting a wild party that never ends. <laughs> Just want to write, get that, get that, uh, repeat that. Okay. So it is like a sugar coated riot in your liver with inflammation leading rebellious charge. So calm the liver storm with nourishing choices and be the peacemaker of that internal party. Okay. So again, life is a balance and it's about finding the sweet spot. Okay. So let's raise a glass of water or a liver friendly herbal tea to your liver, liver's well-being and let it shine bright and be the star of your internal comedy show free from excess sugars, mischievous tricks. Okay, now we have our brain. And this is really what got me uh, during this presentation today is I'm not scared, but I'm going to say 
I'm scared. I don't want to lose my brain. I used to work in a, um, or my mind, I used to work in an old age home and I would see uh, women and men, mostly women is who I dealt with. And some of them would lose their physical abilities, right? So they would be in a walker or a wheelchair. And then others would be perfectly fine physically, but can't remember what they had for, for lunch. Or I'd ask them a question and they say, um, you know what, I don't, what did you just ask me? I don't remember. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to have physical or mental. And then I'm like, I don't want either. Um, and I don't know my future. Okay. I don't know my future, but what I do know is that I have choices today that I can make that will help my brain. And I'm seeing some of this um, with people very close to me right now. And so this has really sparked a fire in me. I have read so many books, listened to so many podcasts. And again, this goes beyond the size of your waist. And, and I said this at the beginning, uh, you know what? It, it doesn't matter the size of your body. To me, it's really helping you understand that how we're living our lifestyle is 95% of where we're going in the future. Genetics is a very small part. Read about epigenetics, right? Genetics is the gun. Your lifestyle is a trigger. That's epigenetics. So our lifestyle, we have so much power over our lifestyle. And if we can keep those excess sugars out of our brain, it will be amazing for our mental health. All right. So we can that's the scatterbrain symphony. So excess sugar can turn your brain into a lively orchestra playing a rather chaotic tune. It can leave you feeling scattered and forgetful. And so many people will say to you, oh, it's just the natural part of aging. It, no, I don't need to accept this as a natural part of aging. I can actually do something about it. Okay, so just start to notice if you're getting that scatterbrain symphony and don't be afraid of it be empowered that you can actually make some choices that you will change. Okay. So we want to stay focused and catch those wondering thoughts. All right. Then we have the mental fog extravaganza. So picture your brain wrapped in a fluffy sugar coated cloud and excess sugar can create a mental fog, making it harder to think clearly and slowing down your cognitive powers. It's like having a sugar induced mist swirling around your brain, obscuring your mental clarity. We have to peek through the fog and find our path. And it is possible. We do not have to lay down and surrender and give our power away. All right. Then we have the roller coaster of emotions. And I can definitely tell you, I had a lot of this going on um, in my 30s into my 40s uh, with perimenopause coming in and I had no idea what was happening, no idea what to do, okay? And sugar is a very soothing drug sometimes. So I turned to sugar, which is what I was used to and um, I wasn't helping myself, you know? And I still eat sugar and I know I'm not helping myself but I'm improving. And that's all I'm asking everybody here is can you be 1% better today than you were yesterday or last week? Okay. So brace yourself for the wild ride of sugar induced mood swings. I had so many mood swings and I just want to give my kids a big hug because they were the recipients of my mood swings and irritability. And I have forgiven myself because when you know better, you do better. But excess sugar can send your emotions into a topsy-turvy journey, making you go from giggles to grumpiness in the blink of an eye, okay? It's like having a sugar-coated emotional roller coaster with unexpected twists and turns. So hold on tight and find your sweet spot of emotional balance. And don't think for one second that food has no effect on your mental, physical, spiritual well-being. Okay. Our diets now in this world, uh, most places are heavily reliant on processed food. And there's a lot of health washing products because a lot of us, including myself, went from junkier processed food to healthier junk food, thinking that we were doing a good job. 
And this is some of what we're talking about in our Vibrant Living membership right now. Okay, then you've got the creativity crunch. So while a touch of sweetness can spark creativity, excess sugar might throw it off balance. It's like having a sugar glazed artist palette where your colors blend into a sticky mess. So we need to find ways to fuel our imagination without getting lost in a sugar-coated chaos. We need to unleash, unleash that creative genius. And I will tell you that sugar and processed and ultra-processed foods are very low vibrational foods and they actually will stunt your creativity. Okay, so we need to get rid of those lower vibrational things, bring in higher vibrational. So then we have the focus fiasco. So sugar overload can make it harder to concentrate and stay on task. Okay, it's like having a swarm of sugar crazed bees buzzing in your brain, distracting you from the important stuff. So stay determined and be the beekeeper of your thoughts and channel your focus like a boss. And I look at our school system now with our children and what's going in their lunches. And it is just a sugar, sugar, sugar fest. Not all of them, but a large majority. And I'm gonna put my hand up that I definitely contributed to my kids' overconsumption of sugar. Again, that's another podcast. And I give tips in my book, Cookie Dough in the Dark, on how to reduce uh, the sugar in your children's lifestyle. Again, not deprivation, not restriction, but some really simple shifts that are very helpful. Okay, so let's just keep an eye on our sweet treats. And I would love for you, and this was my message when I started my, my Menopause Made Easy podcast, is let's shift away from weight. Let's shift away from the scale and the weight, and let's focus on our health, our health, the health of our blood, our liver, our brain, our eyes. Uh, let's release and shrink fat from our fat cells. Okay, let's focus on the health and happiness of our beautiful human body. And remember, you are just a, you are just a product of your habits. So you have the power to change. Okay, you are not controlled by genetics. You have power through your lifestyle. Okay, now we're going to go to excess sugar in your eyes. You know, so now I'm wearing my glasses in my 50s and I had perfect eyesight. Um, and then I started to read more about the sugar and I'm like, man, I want to see. Like, what a gift. What, a, <clears throat> excuse me, what gratitude do I have for being able to see clearly? I don't want my eyes getting worse. Okay, and I have some things that I can do. So let's talk about the sugar-coated blur. So imagine looking at the world through a pair of sugar-coated glasses, which is almost if I take this off, I can see a little bit of a blur. Um, and of course, I can get stronger glasses, but that's not the point. Okay, this is a symptom of, of eye health, is a symptom of a root cause of something that's going on in our body. And I'm all about fixing the root cause. So excess sugar can mess with your eyesight, causing blurry vision that's not as cute as those trendy Instagram filters, everybody. It's like having a sugar-induced smudge on your visual masterpiece. And I tell you, I am on a mission to see if I can improve my eyesight. Uh, some days I have good, some days are good. <laughs> some days I fall into the sugar hole. But again, it's that process making progress. Excuse me. Okay, then we have the disco ball drama. So excess sugar loves to party, okay? But unfortunately, it can turn your eyes into a disco ball. Yep, you might experience more floaters, those little specks or cobweb-like shakes that seem to dance around in your vision. And it's like having a tiny sugar-fueled light show in your eyeballs, and they're going party on floaters. <clears throat> and I'm like, no, no, I don't want floaters. I don't want floaters in my eyes. Okay, and let me tell you, again, just backing up the bus here, we're all humans, we all have, um, you know, food tastes like that we love, we all have habitual patterns, we all have emotions we haven't learned to deal with. So we're having this human experience, but I really hope um, that you can start to see that there's some how sugar is wreaking havoc in your life. And I'm going to definitely give you some strategies before we leave here today of things that you can do. Okay, then you have the eye itch extravaganza. 
Excess sugar can lead to inflammation in your body. There's that word again, okay? And your eyes are no exception. Prepare for potential eye itchiness that will make you want to scratch like a DJ on the turntables. It's like having a sugar-coated tickle party in your peepers. Resist the urge to scratch and be the cool cucumber. The cool cucumber at the club, which means if you're starting to notice some of these things happen, happening to you on a more regular basis, it is a wake up call. It is a sign and you can decide, you know, this is what I say in all of my programs and in my, in my podcast, you can decide if you want to take action or not. But the thing is, is that not taking action, okay, has consequences and taking action has consequences. Which consequences would you like? All right. So empower yourself again. And then you have the dry eye desert, which sugar being the sneaky dehydrator that it is can contribute to dry eyes. It's like turning your eyes into a desert oasis without the cool mirage or the palm trees. So cue the eye drops and imagine yourself as a hydration hero, quenching the sugar induced thirst of your precious eyeballs. So are you someone that has constantly got to put, um, you know, liquid in your eyes? Again, I'm just asking you questions because a lot of times people, you know, don't connect this back to diet and don't connect it back to sugar because we don't want to disrupt anybody. Okay. But I'm here to tell you, I put on my big curl pants about 15 years ago, and thank goodness I started to look into all of this, okay? And again, my mission, my, my operation, my joy is really to help women thrive after 35, be alive and vibrant. It is possible. Okay, then you have the sugar rush of eye pressure. Excess sugar may also mess with the delicate balance of fluid in your eyes, leading to increased eye pressure. It's like having a sugar-fueled race car speeding through your eye tunnels. Hold on tight and imagine yourself as the racetrack marshal, keeping an eye on your pressure levels. Okay, so don't panic, okay? So the eyes, good or bad, are one of the... Um, long-term effects of uncontrolled blood sugar levels or blood sugar or sugar consumption. But keep an eye and pun intended on your sugar intake and really start to look at your menopausal uh, plate, okay, what you're eating. And, you know, when you go and get your eyes tested and if they're getting worse, it can, it can be a sign. If you have the itchiness and the, and the blurry and the dry eyes, it's a sign, right? And so maybe you just want to get, uh, you know, better glasses to see. But for me, I'm like, okay, what do I need to start taking responsibility for in my life? Okay, Woo! a lot of talking, everybody. So how is excess sugar affecting fat storage? Because I know at the end of the day, so many of you come to me and you're like, Tanya, you know, this is most of my clients. Tanya, I want to lose weight. Okay. And again, you've heard me say this a thousand times. You want to release weight. And more importantly, you actually want to shrink your fat cells. And then I like to go in the back door while we're shrinking your fat cells to really improve your vitality, your health, and your energy. All right, so how is excess sugar affecting fat storage? Well, you've got the blood sugar roller coaster ride that we talked about. You've got the fat storage party, right? That we talked about. So you bring in the sugary treats, we've got extra space. Those fat cells, everybody, are endless, endless. So there are certain times during your life where you will um, build extra fat cells, like when you're a teenager, when you're pregnant, uh, perhaps when you're going through menopause. But those fat cells have the ability, like these balloons, to grow and grow and grow and grow. And what happens with a diet is every time you, sh so think of the first time you throw blow up a balloon. Like it's really hard, right? It's really hard. So you're trying to blow up this balloon. And then um, um, you're, you're blowing this balloon up. Um, and okay, so sorry, lost my train of thought for a minute. And it's really hard the first time, 
But then it comes back down again and you blow up it up again. It's not so hard. And then the hundredth time you blow it up, it's so freaking easy and it gets so big. And that's what happens with dieting. Okay. The more you lose weight and gain weight and lose weight and gain weight, the more you're making those fat cells be like, hey, come on in. I got lots of room here. Okay. So they will happily store away excess sugar calories and you know this isn't just about sugar they'll they'll take all calories but um especially those sugar ones for later use so remember you have your your macronutrients your sugar your uh, carbohydrates your fats your proteins okay you have your macronutrients we need them all in our diet for different reasons and then you have micronutrition when we are eating but beyond what our energy needs are Okay, and we also after the age of 35, we really have to talk about balancing hormones. So this is not about calories in, calories out. That is not what I teach. That is so passe. It's old. It's you should be taking that right out. This is about, especially after the age of 35, learning how to use foods to balance your blood sugars. Okay. So, like I said, uh, any excess in your body will be stored in your fat cells. Okay. So we need to show those fat cells who's boss by balancing our sugar intake, eating a balanced menopausal plate, right? Getting some muscle on our body so it can use it as energy. Okay, then we have the sneaky sugar spies. So, you know, this again is just excess sugar can be like the sneaky spies infiltrating your body and converting it into stored fat like ninja with ninja-like precision. All right, so we just need to keep an eye on our sugar consumption and liquid calories are a killer. If I can give you one thing to work on here, dump the liquid. All right. So, um, you know, when my kids were growing up, it was either apple juice at dinner or a dessert. It was not both. And then eventually there was no more juice boxes in my kids' lunches. It was water because they had enough sugary crap in their lunch. <laughs> so, uh, and I know without a shadow of a doubt that you will save money getting rid of some of these things out of your diet. You will save money because we don't need to be putting juice boxes in our kids' lunch. They're far better off eating a whole apple that has the fiber, which will help with blood sugar regulation. Okay, so now we have the sugar addiction tango. Oh my gosh, uh, food companies spend millions, billions of dollars to get you addicted to food so that your taste buds dance with joy, okay? So excess sugar can make you crave more. And I'm totally in that camp, everybody. Like I said, I am human. I have a bit of chocolate, dopamine kicks in, my chemicals in my brain kick in. Oh, I want more. You know, my, my, cook, my book's called Cookie Dough in the Dark because I loved cookies, not store-bought cookies, homemade cookies. I would eat the batter raw. I would eat it warm. I would eat most of the cookies before they were even cooled. I had a real problem. So part of that was emotional eating. Part of it was chemical imbalance. Some of it was uh, just uh, like uh, the sugar addiction of just wanting more and more and more. It was about gut bacteria because what you feed your gut, your gut craves. So there's a multi- factoral approach here it's not like just do this and you will be healed it is a process okay so then look at this again we've got the inflammation party crashes everybody and excess sugar can invite unwelcome guests to an inflammation party in your body it's like having a rowdy group of sugar induced party crashers creating ruckus and causing issues in your tissues inflammation in your tissues. Okay. So again, we really want to look at what are some anti-inflammatory foods that I can start to get in my diet so that my body will feel light and energetic and be ready to dance to its own beat instead of being bogged down with all this inflammation. Okay. So action. What can you do? Because information is one thing. This is what I've said a lot. Information is one thing how do we put it into action? Okay. And so I, you can Google everything now. You can find out so much information. 
You can have paralysis by analysis. You can be like, what do I do next? So I'm going to give you some steps and then I'm going to uh, share with you uh, what we have coming up in my program. All right, so we have the blood sugar cleanup crew. All right, so one of the things that I have been doing for the last 10 years approximately, after I've watched a documentary on fasting, is um, understanding how fasting helped to regulate my blood sugars. Now, the first way into fasting is to notice what time you stop eating, to what time you start eating the next day. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be focusing on with my sugar release fast. So like so many things that I see, people jump right in, okay? And they, again, they jump off the cliff, but without measuring what's going on. So I always say you can't manage what you don't measure. So where are you right now when it comes to fasting? And this is what I work with uh, with a lot of my clients privately and in my Vibrant Living membership um, and do, doing my fasting programs is a lot of people are like, well, I don't eat till two, but they're eating until like nine o'clock at night. They've got really, you know, ingrained nighttime eating habits. So that is one area that we would look at. But when it comes to fasting, Fasting, whatever your fasting window is now is you just have an idea and then you see, okay, how can I make it a little longer? And unlike men, which a lot of fasting studies are done on, we are women. So we should fast according to our cycle. I did a, a call last week about we have a 28 to 30 day cycle, whether you're pre, peri or post menopause, we all have cycles and our hormones are cycling. Okay, and so you really want to learn how to cycle during your cycle, whether you have your period or we like to use the lunar cycle in my group for those that are postmenopausal, because you can't do the same fast all the time. That does not work. So when it comes to fasting, it's like summoning a group of energetic cleaning crew members to tackle the excess sugars in your blood and your muscle, and your liver, and your brain, and your eyes, and your fat, okay? And they march in there with their brooms, their mops, and their sugar-snatching vacuums, and they sweep away those lingering glucose molecules. Remember, glucose is just another name for sugar. So it's a sugar cleansing party where your blood sugar levels get a much-needed reset. We are eating way too much food, and we are eating way too often, and our, our body it, it, it like it eats breakfast and then you have a snack at, at 10 and your body's like oh my god all I'm doing all day is digesting food I can't clean up the cancer cells I can't get rid of the excess glucose in the fat or the liver or the brain or the eyes I'm just constantly dealing with this onslaught of sugar do you know that we didn't snack like snacking is relatively new in our life like it, it did not exist but food manufacturers need to, you know, sell more food. <laughs> so we snack. We told people to snack. But anyway, okay, so we really want to fast and have this sugar cleansing party where your blood sugar levels get a much needed reset and let those cleanup crew members do their dance and restore balance in your bloodstream. All right, so we really look at fasting as a way to give your body a break so that it can do work other than digesting your food. Okay, and then you have the mug, muscle sugar feast interruption. So fasting interrupts the never ending buffet that excess sugar throws for your muscles. It's like putting up a sign that says, hey, sorry, buffet closed, okay? It puts that up in front of your muscle cells. And instead of constantly feeding on sugar, your muscles shift gears and start tapping into stored sugar, which is called glycogen and fat for fuel. So I did a podcast episode. I think it's episode eight in the Menopause Made Easy podcast. Don't quote me on that. But I talk about, and it's part one, because I haven't even done part two yet. It's called a stored sugar. Or are you a sugar burner or a fat burner? You have two sources of fuel in your body. 92% of the population is metabolically inflexible, which means you are burning sugars and not tapping into your fat cells. 
So you are not going to have sustainable weight loss. You are not going to have sustainable fat shrinkage if you don't learn to tap into the other energy system in your body. Okay, like the muscle said here, if they have to keep just burning that, uh, that immediate sugar, I like to say, it can't get into that stored sugar and fat for fuel. So as you begin to become metabolically flexible, you're hearing these words, I hope more and more, um, you know, listening to me and others in the health field, um, you will watch your muscles become lean, mean, and efficient machines. So I want you to take on this challenge and really start to get out of that mindset of dieting and fat loss, okay? So our, we want to get into those muscle sugars. And again, like I said, if you're not lifting weights, I highly recommend it, okay? Uh, you must build muscle. I did an episode, I can't remember, it's called um, Strong Bones After 40. Listen to it. Osteoporosis is real, okay? Sugar eats away at your bones. Oh my gosh. Okay, but let's keep this party going. Woo -woo -woo. All right, so then we have our fat burning bonanza. Okay, so we were talking about the fat and the sugar switches in your body. So fasting flips the switch on your fat cells, okay? Turning them from hoarders to burners. That's what you want. You want to become a fat burner and shrink your fat cells. So it's like having a fat burning party where those stubborn fat cells finally get the memo that it's time to contribute to the energy needs of your body. And they start releasing stored fats and you become the ultimate fat burning machine. I have been teaching fat chats for years. I would have people come to my house. I would go talk in the community. This is not new stuff that I'm teaching. I have been teaching this for a very long time. Okay, what I'm teaching you is not the next magic pill. There are no magic pills. Okay, this is about finding simple shifts that you can do sustainably, consistently over time to get that vibrant health and shrink your fat cells. Okay, so we want to say goodbye to those love handles as your body taps into the fat reserves. Remember, we talked about the love handles. All right. Excess sugar, hormones, and toxins are going into those fat cells. Those fat cells are like balloons and they're getting bigger. But because you are focused on burning sugars and not tapping into your fat cells, you will not have sustainable weight loss. Okay, the sugar detox expedition. Fasting embarks on a sugar detox expedition, um, sending your body's detoxification systems into overdrive. So this is what got me hooked on fasting uh, probably about 10 years ago is I saw that documentary. And this is what I shared with you at the beginning of this, this chat is that when you have those excess sugars in your diet, okay, and protein can turn into sugar, everybody. So it's not just about processed food. That's another sidebar. But um, when you have this excess in your body, oh, where was I going with this? Oh, it's going into your blood, your fat your muscles, your liver, your brain, your eyes, okay? So we want to have some fasting so that we can start to pull those stored sugars out of those places, um, not only for your muffin top, but also for avoiding chronic disease, okay? So we want to have a team of sugar detox superheroes swooping in to neutralize your sugar overload in your system and they help clear out. So fasting helps to clear out toxins, reduce inflammation and restore harmony to your body. Okay. And I'm not talking about a cleanse that is a short lived, your body cleanses and detoxes every day. What I'm trying to get you guys to understand and what, and what actions to take is that you become a more efficient machine. It's not about a 30 day detox. It is about how how do you um, tap in and become more efficient at burning this stored sugar and releasing this excess fat? Okay, uh, we have the sugar addiction intervention. So fasting plays the role of a sugar addiction interventionist. 
helping you break free from the sweet grip of excess sugar. And it has really helped me. It's been a gradual process. I'm not in for one and done. I'm not in for quick fixes anymore. If that's you, stop listening right now. I am in for the long game. I want you to spend your money wisely. Stop being pulled by shiny stars, which is the first episode in my Menopause Made Easy podcast. Okay. And it is really easy to be pulled by those shiny stars because they know how to manipulate your brain. So I really want you to put your big girl pants on here, everybody, and really start to understand that you're in this for the long term. And that is fun. And it's your journey to vibrant health. So um, when we get this, the fasting comes in here. It's like attending a support group meeting where your cravings learn to take a back seat. So when you couple what I'm going to teach you in a minute and what I've been teaching you with my five hacks to cut your cravings, you start to have strategies other than willpower, discipline, and restriction. Okay. So fasting gives you a chance to reassess your relationship with sugar. Oh, yes, it does. And discover the joys of nourishing your body with wholesome foods. So um, when I do longer fasts, right, there is mental chatter that goes on. So physically, I'm actually not hungry, but my, my mind is saying, uh, Tanya, eat, uh, eat the sugar, eat whatever. So again, that's a whole other episode, but um, really um, understanding that we have a lot of mental hunger, okay? We have more mental hunger than physical hunger because remember, we have fat storage that would last us months. So we need to learn how to become a sugar and fat burner, an efficient sugar and an efficient fat burning machine. And you can catch that on YouTube under Mindset Minute. It's called Mental Versus Physical Hunger. Okay, so like always with everything we do, I love coaching and supporting women. And when you start fasting, I think this is just another area of really being educated and you should uh, approach it responsibly and with guidance, okay? So I always compare this to, you have a car, your car goes thump, thump, you take it to a professional, you take it to a mechanic, you need to write up a new will, you don't do it yourself, you go and hire a lawyer. Your body is a magnificent machine and you know a lot about your body, but I have to say, I probably know more <laughs> just because for 32 years I've been doing this. So, you know, whether it's me or somebody else, go and get professional help. Okay. And like I said, I didn't start fasting yesterday and then put this presentation together. I have been fasting for 10 years and I had small groups where I was doing my fat chats. So I have really you know, dug into this and learned how to uh, fast with women's cycles and understand the mental and understand how to break a fast with proper foods, how to, how to go into fasts, how long should you do a fast? When in your cycle should you not be fasting so that you can make progesterone, right? So there's a lot of nuance here. It's not just denying yourself food for a certain amount of time. That's not like the, the, that there's that might be sound so simple it's it's um it's more than that okay all right so when we do fasting right we use it as a powerful tool to reset your blood your body's sugar balance and promote overall well-being we have an epidemic right now of diabetes and pre-diabetes it's an epidemic Okay, you can decide whether you want to join that epidemic or if you want to watch from the sidelines. I'm going to watch from the sidelines. Okay, but that requires me to do different actions that I that I would do if I want to be part of the the pre diabetics, and it's it's massive. So I'm just here from my heart to share this information with you. So grab your fasting cape, everybody. I want you to join the sugar cleansing party and let's get your body to thrive as it bids farewell to excess sugars, excess toxins, excess um, uh, hormones. And we begin to shrink those fat cells so that you can join me in a journey to being a healthier you. So, um, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I can keep talking here because uh, this has just been 
so long, but <laughs> um, what we can do about it, I'll just say very quickly here. Um, we want to get into the liver, right? We want to clean out the excess sugar in the livers. We want to say goodbye to the, sh the sugar stockpiles and let your liver relax in sugar-free paradise. All right. We want to shake up the uh, brain's sugar shake up. So fasting shakes up things in your brain like a wild dance party that jolts your brain cells wide awake. Okay. We got to press that reset button. And fasting, like I said, will help you tap into that alternative energy source, which is called ketones during fasting. But just think of sugar and fat. Just keep it simple here. Okay. And you will become sharp, focused, and ready to conquer your challenges. All right. And then our eyes. Okay. Who doesn't want to see? honestly. Okay. And who doesn't want to think and who doesn't want to be healthy? I mean, I don't know. I do. So, um, if fasting provides a sugar-free getaway for your eyes, like a tropical vacation, all right, where they can bask in the absence of excess sugars. So we want to put our eyes on a sugar-free beach, shielding them from the harmful effects of sugar and oxidative stress and inflammation. We want to have brighter healthier eyes so that we can enjoy a beautiful view without the sugar hazed, sugar induced haze. Okay. Um, we've already kind of talked about liver, but again, it's just fasting gives your liver's sugar metabolism a makeover and turns it from being a sugar processing factory into a sugar burning factory. Okay. So we want to stop storing and we want to start using, and we want to have a lean, mean, sugar burning liver machine. Okay, so we're going to do a sugar sneaking eviction. So fasting kicks those sneaky sugars, those sneaky sugar ninjas out of your body one by one. Okay, kick them out. And they may have been wreaking havoc in your liver, your brain, your eyes, your muscles, your fat cells, your blood but fasting puts a stop to their mischief. It's like having a ninja showdown where fasting shows those sugar sneaking ninja who the real boss is. So sayonara ninjas, all right? Okay, we are embarking on a new path here. Okay, woo, my goodness. So what are your next steps? Okay, well, you can do this totally on your own. I've given you so much information. You can go listen to my podcast. You can join my Move, Eat, Live Better Facebook group. You can pick up my book. You can um, get my free resource, um, Cut Your Cravings. But if you've done that and so much more and you're just like, the wheels are just still spinning, I'm going to give you a few things to um, focus on and then something else. So you really want to balance your blood sugars, okay? And you don't want to just be like, I got to balance my blood sugars. You got to be like, okay, what can I do to balance my blood sugars? Pick up my five hacks to cut your, your cravings, okay? That is a really great place to start. I'm doing that, okay? Then we want to decrease the stored sugar, okay? I've given you so many tips. Hydration, manage your metabolic plate, start to lift weights, right? Love on your liver, okay? And, and as we go through, I will share more and more like specifically what to do. You wanna shrink your fat cells, everybody, okay? So we want to, um, oh, where was I on here? Shrink your fat cells so that um, you start to become a fat burner. Stop with the weight loss obsession, okay? Focus on shrinking your fat cells. You want to love on your liver and pull those excess toxins and sugars out of your liver so that it can perform the functions to keep you healthy and vibrant. You want to repair your gut. And this is one thing I really dive into with fasting because so many of us, we can fast. And then when we're eating, we're not eating to support our gut health. And your gut health affects your oral health. Okay, so if you have oral issues, they're connected. Your gut health affects your brain health. We are not individualized. We are a system. We work together. All right, we want to switch off, oopsie, switch off inflammation in our body. Inflammation is the root cause of all disease. You have the choice, like I do, with what I put in my mouth every single day. Okay, I've been talking about food here. 
But we also, in our Vibrant Living membership, we talk about stress management. We talk about sleep. We talk about toxins. All of those things can create inflammation in our body. Again, we're not jumping off a cliff here. We're doing simple shifts that are really actionable. And we have a lot of fun. Okay? And, and my ladies are making amazing changes. And it's so wonderful to see. We want to improve your brain health. So you want to get the good fats into your diet. You want to get rid of the bad fats, okay? You want to exercise your brain. Movement is so important for your brain health, all right? And then you want to improve your eyes. I gave you lots of things. Again, excess sugar, um, getting that out of your diet. Okay, so your next step. So if you have done all those things, or if you're like, you know what, I just, I don't have the energy. I don't even, I don't even want to spend the next four hours Googling on things I need to make. I, I need support. I need accountability. I, I need to understand so that I can take ownership over my own health, improve my immunity, improve my waistline, improve my health, my vitality, my energy. As I move forward from the age of 35 to 120, I want to live my life, okay, on my terms, all right? We are doing um, a new fast starting in July. Um, you can join anytime uh, because we'll start to talk about it. But we are diving into a fast that is going to help you release the stored sugar, which I have just spent the last hour talking about where sugar gets stored in your body. And that if you're not tapping in and pulling those sugars out, they're just festering. Okay. And it's going to affect your health and your weight. So act now and you can receive 20% off your first month of fasting and the fat release program. Now you can just come in for a month and leave. I'm not gonna hold anybody there that doesn't wanna be there. But I will tell you that we do a new fast every single month. We do a lot of fun and amazing things. We have weekly challenges. It keeps you accountable. It keeps you motivated. It keeps you supported. And you can hear the passion in my voice. I walk the talk, everybody, okay? I don't get you guys to do something that I don't do myself. I've been doing this a very long time. So I love you all. I love you all very much. And my hope and my desire and my passion is that you get to walk forward in this life with amazing health, with vibrant health, to understand not to give your health over to somebody else, that you have so many things that you can learn about and that you have control about. In my group, we talk about emotional eating. So if you're having problems with your emotional stuff, we dive into that, right? That is all part of this fasting journey. So many amazing things are going to come up. So um, the code here, I'll put it in the show notes because I'm going to put this on my Menopause Made Easy podcast. I'll put it on my Facebook group. And I'll, if I ever put this onto my YouTube, I will put it there as well. So you can click the link. I'm not all about fancy, fancy, okay? It's a very straightforward page. You can put the code SAVE20 in. I'll put that in the message and you can join me. Or if this didn't resonate with you at all, but you know a friend or a family member who is struggling, okay? They're struggling for weight. They're struggling for health. They can't sleep. They're, they've got a monkey mind. Um, they don't want to have dementia, um, you know, if, if this resonated with you at all, please share it because that is such a gift to share health. Okay. Oh my gosh. Health is your wealth. Health is the only thing you have everybody. So I want you to give yourself a hug right now. I want you to give yourself a hug. I want you to love on yourself. You have created a beautiful human being. And if you choose to improve yourself, like I did about 15 years ago when I started this journey, it's about 18 years now, um, know that with simple shifts, compassion, curiosity, support, and motivation, and if you choose that to do that with me, I would be honored to be your guide, all right? So that is what I can offer you right now. Thank you so much for listening. Share this with your gal pals. Have a beautiful day, and I hope to see you inside our programs and I'll leave those links for you. Thank you.